I'm interested in people being able to have different choices and, um, and having equality of outcome. Aha, uh -huh. well, so the overwhelming proportion of people who are in prisons are male. Now, do you want to equalize that, just out of curiosity? I what about bricklayers? They're 99% male. And, the f and we've got about three quarters of, of the population now in universities mm -hmm. in the humanities and social sciences are female. Yeah. Are we going to equalize that? And well, men, men work more longer hours. They work more dangerous jobs. They're more likely to move. They're more likely to work outside. They're more likely to participate in jobs in the STEM fields that are scalable. They make more money for those reasons. And that's all hidden under the idea that the reason that men and women make different amounts of money is because of their gender. It's a very simplistic analysis. In the video, you said that the problem with those angry women is that since at the end of the argument you cannot fight physically, you can't really deal with them. <laughs> that's not what I said. I said that that's one of the things that keeps conversation between men civil. Women can't argue with angry women. Women are often bullied by angry women. What I meant was more, uh, you, uh, you, you, you said that, and I'm really like not trying to paraphrase you or you know, to put words into your mouth. Uh, you, you, you actually you are trying that no, directly. No, it is things that you said, that you cannot deal with uh, those yes, uh, but don't crazy tell me that you're not trying because to put they're words hysterical into my mouth because you've this. selected so what you're going to ask, and you selected it very carefully with a tremendous amount of forethought. Well, I, no, and I, there's a purpose for that. What is the purpose precisely? I am, I am quoting things that you said. Why? Because, what is it that because, you're trying because, to establish? Because you said that. I'm I thought we were talking about masculinity. We are. No, we're not. Yes, we are. What? How are we talking about masculinity? Because I'm asking you what you think of men and of women. Isn't no, that... basically what you've been trying to do, I would say, for the last 15 minutes is put me into a sequence of corners by accusing me of various forms of misbehavior. So why are we doing that? What's the point here? These are things that you said. Uh, my That's job my as a journalist is to ask questions about what you represent and the ideas that you defend. Your, isn't your it? job is also to select the things that you might ask about in some manner that doesn't indicate a substantive bias. You picked three things to talk to me about in the last 20 minutes that were very carefully selected. Like, why did you pick those things? Because this is my job. No, not necessarily. You could be asking me, for example, why I've spoken to 250,000 people live in the last eight months. That might be more newsworthy. Well, we're not going to have a, a big debate about journalism, but uh, if a journalist doesn't ask the tough questions, how can you give the good answers? But it depends on what the tough questions are. It depends well, on the I didn't whether think that they would be tough. We're talking about things that you said. I mean, if it's easier to have conversation between men, because there is this underlying threat, you know, of a uh, physical uh, contact. I don't think it's you, easier. Mm. It tends to be somewhat more civil. Do you think a trans woman is a real woman? <laughs> I don't really like the way those questions are formulated. You know, I don't know what that means. What do you mean a real woman? Well, she I'm asking you, in your mind, you know, it depends what you think a real woman is, but do you think a trans woman is a woman? No. Why not? Because I think that women are capable, generally speaking, of having babies and they have female genitalia and they have an XX chromosome and, and I think the biological markers are relevant. Why are you against the use of alternate pronouns? I'm, not, I'm against the use of, of le legislation to determine what words are that myself and other people are required to utter. But would you use alternate pronouns if a student asked you to? I think I've made my position on that clear already. Well, perhaps not to our audience at home who are just being introduced to this. Would you use alternate no. pronouns? And why not? I, because I don't believe that other people have the right to determine what language I use, especially when it's backed by punitive legislation. And when the words that are being required are the constructions, they're artificial constructions of people I regard as radical ideologues whose viewpoint I do not share. The Ministry of Women's Affairs in New Zealand and the Minister of Women's Affairs, or the Minister for Women as she's known, suggested recently that there were too many white old men on boards in New Zealand of private and public companies and just suggested that they needed to move aside so there could be more diversity. Your response to that suggestion? Well, um, what, what's her racial and ethnic background, just out of curiosity? I, I think uh, she's born in America, Julianne Genta. Um, she's a member of our Green Party here. Is she white? Yes. Well, maybe it's time for her to bloody well move aside and let someone who isn't white have her position.
That's pure narcissism at work, by the way. <clears throat> you know, to hijack, a, to hijack an event like this that other people put time and effort into and to use the, their, their civility of the crowd and the civility of the organizers as an excuse to blatantly yell out your ill-informed opinions is no way to conduct a civil dialogue. It's absolutely appalling. The people who do that should be embarrassed. As you might imagine, you've been a topic of conversation on this campus a lot in the past week or so, certainly among a lot of us who discuss politics. And one of the things that sort of united people who like and dislike a lot of your ideas is that we appreciate your defense of free speech, and we appreciate you coming here to talk about it with us. Uh, but one of the things I thought was really interesting is Professor Van Dyke addressed the distinction between you and Jonathan Haidt. And you mentioned this as sort of a temperamental one. And I think, I'm, I'm sure that's true to some extent, but I, I noticed you've, you've made a lot of more sort of substantively inflammatory claims. Like in the course of this lecture, you called uh, pe the authors of Facebook posts demons and totalitarians. Uh, in past events, you've called them things like uh, neo-Marxists, cultural Marxists. Uh, you've called them, a, a, I believe, a fifth column that is committing treason against the West. And it seems to me this is more than temperamental. This is a substantive difference. And, and it's another, a substantive yes, difference, and, yes. And another thing you've done is that unlike Haidt, you have a more sort of comprehensive political program. You've talked a lot in defense of traditional hierarchies, both of gender, of class, so on, uh, though emphatically not of race. Uh, and so it seems that I haven't talked about defense of traditional hierarchies in terms of gender and class. That's not true. Well, you've talked about hierarchies in society. You've talked yeah, about Yeah, that's yes. true. I well, have done that. Not but that I haven't class? justified them on the basis of gender and class. You, or, you, whatever it well, okay, is. You, you not about, okay. That's an important yes, distinction. Okay, but you, you defend hierarchies in society in a way that you talk a lot about the Pareto distribution, yes? That doesn't mean I yeah. defend it. Well, okay. You, no, you, not well, yes. okay. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I think you talk Observing a lot. Observing that something exists is yes. not the same as defending it. How in the world? Well, people attack it, right? What's that? You don't. People attack it. Attack as inherently what? Attack the hierarchies of society as inherently unjust, right? Well, they're they're unjust, yes. but they're also useful. Okay, so you you def you say they're useful. Some well, look, people would look, disagree look at with it that this proposition. Way. Okay, look at it this way. <laughs> You obviously think that it's worthwhile to stand up and ask a question. Yes. So you think that standing up and asking a question is better than yes. not standing up and asking a question. Yes. Okay, that's a hierarchy. Yes. Of values. Yes. Okay, without the hierarchy of values, you couldn't act. Of course. No, no, not of course. Well, wait. It's you, partly why I'm I, defending I the hierarchy. Here. Without no a hierarchy, there's no the impetus facts to of act. The hierarchy, right? What's that? There is a hierarchy in society, right? No, there's multiple hierarchies in society. Okay, there are multiple society. hierarchies in society, right? Yes. And you say that they are based in, you, you invoke the lobster, right? That they are based in, uh, in nature. Yes. I said that they were inevitable. Yes, yes. that they were inevitable. Some right. people that disagree with that. That doesn't mean that they're but, good. But my point is that, uh, this is generally relevant to it, you have a broader point than free speech. This is one of the things you talk about, yes? Yes. Okay. Whereas I think there are some other activists who focus on more exclusively. I'm not on free an speech. activist. 